Mr. Chairman, it is my privilege to share an overview of some of the activities of the Women's Ministries Department of the East Caribbean Conference of Seventh-day Adventists during the period September 2017 to December 2020. The Women's Ministries Department's principal goal is that of uplifting Christ in the church and in the world. But specifically, we are called to elevate women as persons of inestimable worth. The Women's Ministries Department of East Caribbean Conference sought to do this through the following objectives, nurturing, empowering, and supporting our women and gems, our girls of excellence and moral standing. Our annual conventions were seen as great opportunities to help us realize the objective of nurturing our women and girls. These conventions were transformed from our traditional service format into seminar conventions. The themes included building wholesome homes, heart renewal, and when friends gather. A virtual weekend retreat which looked at various elements of women's friendship. The Caribbean Union Director for Women, Children, and Adolescents Ministries, Sister Deborah Henry, was our main speaker for this retreat. Life's unexpected turns force us to create new ways to accomplish our goals. When the COVID-19 pandemic arrived on our shores, we sought to navigate the attendant challenges still with the objective of nurturing our women and girls in mind. We anchored on our virtual platforms. While seen by many as inconvenient, it allowed us the unexpected blessing of widening our audience and providing a more dynamic ministry. Virtual Thursday evening Bible studies provided spiritual nurture to members and community persons alike. These experiences were spirit-filled, encouraging, and uplifting. They challenged attendees to draw closer to Jesus as we get ready for his soon return. The Restore Your Royalty series by visiting author, life coach, and psychologist Patricia Hudson Henry sought to help women and girls embrace the title of royalty bestowed on them by the King of Kings, whose children they are, thereby empowering them to fulfill their high calling. Her visit included five churches in Dominica and three in Barbados, each island having a session specially tailored for our gems. The advent of the COVID-19 pandemic occasioned virtual sessions which allowed our reach to extend directly into homes. We switched gears, driving our programs onto the online platforms as professionals from a variety of disciplines blessed us with presentations on a wide range of topics, empowering attendees to deal with life's challenges, including those occasioned by the COVID-19 pandemic. We were blessed at times to work in collaboration with family ministries, health ministries, and Adventist Development Relief Agency in educating and thereby empowering our members. GEMS Week, focusing solely on our girls of excellence and moral standing, has become an annual event. The first one, which falls within the period under consideration, sought to spiritually empower our young ladies. Under the theme, Gems You Are, Sister Hillette Virgo, Jamaican author, publisher, and life coach, assured our young ladies that they are anointed, blessed, called, and fearfully fashioned. The objective of providing support for our women and gems was met in several ways. As part of our end it now, the fight against abuse of women and children, the Women's Ministries Pantry Day provides food, items, and personal supplies to shelters for abused women and children. It also provides this support to individual women and families in our church and community throughout the year. While there are no shelters of this nature in Dominica, local churches have been encouraged to provide food hampers to families in need. This initiative is supported by the generous donations of women across the conference. Bereavement support sessions held with women's ministries leaders, 
school staff, and churches using the booklet Seven Suggestions in Supporting the Bereaved provided simple suggestions on how the much-needed support can be provided for persons both in the church as well as the community who are bereaved. The vehicle of social media is the welcomed arena for our young to share and receive information and entertainment and to provide support and encouragement to their peers. Our GEMS created and presented messages of encouragement and inspiration on the Sister to Sister series. These were shared via WhatsApp and YouTube and proved a true source of comfort and support during the initial discomforting period of our COVID-19 pandemic. Another initiative of the Women's Ministries Department is that of Zoom Exercise, an exercise program led by fitness enthusiast Beverly John Toppin. Every Sunday morning, the department was happy to team up with the health ministries in this venture. Romans chapter 13 verse 7 tells us to give honor to whom honor is due. Understanding and appreciating this, the Women's Ministries Department has, over the last four years, recognized the service of 11 women from across our conference. We are aware that there are so many others who should be recognized. Thus, we have encouraged our Women's Ministries leaders in local churches to honor individuals from their church and community as well. The Women's Ministries sought to heighten awareness of international concerns by lending support to annual days. In 2019, for the first time, we were represented as a conference in the Breast Cancer Society's Walk for a Cure. The Health Ministries coordinator, Sister Priscilla Prevo, took charge of the Dominica leg, while the Women's Ministries director led in Barbados. The following year, our support was transmitted via a virtual campaign which the Breast Cancer Society adopted and shared publicly. The department also hosted a baby loss group session which looked at dealing with the challenges resulting from baby loss. This was led by Mr. George Graves and his team, followed by an online session, Resiliency After Pregnancy and Baby Loss, led by psychologist Patricia Hudson Henry and Janelle Williams, public health officer who discussed her personal experience with baby loss. And now let us look at our children and adolescents ministries report. The department's goals were to develop and strengthen our children and adolescents relationship with Jesus and encourage the use of gifts and opportunities to share him with others. The Bible shares an occasion when mothers brought their children to Jesus. They believed this encounter would change their lives. With that story in mind, the Children's Ministries Department sought to provide occasion for children to have an encounter with Jesus every day. Prayerfully, the Bible-based devotions on the go was born. Initially created for children in the East Caribbean Conference, it now blesses children in every division of the World Church. To further enhance the spiritual development of the children, the Hymn of the Month initiative was introduced. This was intended to develop an appreciation for and preserve the rich heritage and beauty of hymns as part of our worship experience. Each month, the children were encouraged to learn a specific hymn as it is used in Sabbath school and worship at home. Jesus called disciples, taught them, and commissioned them to share the good news of salvation with others. Our children are never too young to do the same. Tell someone provided children with a simple statement of truth each week to share with others. This is simple child evangelism. Special days and weeks allowed our children to work together in the creation of programs. These included the annual conventions, which were totally child-led, and special weeks like Week of Prayer and Creation Week, in which most of the items were led by children. These programs provided opportunities for children to display and use their gifts to glorify God and bless others. 
During the Sabbath conventions, the department provided a variety of interesting lunchtime activities which helped the children maintain proper Sabbath observance. The book Child Guidance encourages us on page 260 to praise children when they do well, for judicious commendation is as great a help to them as it is to those older. Following this directive, the Children's Ministries Department established the Joseph and Esther Awards, which acknowledge students' spiritual development. The awards are given to one boy and girl from each of our Seventh-day Adventist schools in the conference. In an attempt to overcome the challenge of not receiving Seventh-day Adventist vacation Bible school kits, the first kit Bible Treasures, which was created in 2019, focused on the treasury of lessons in Proverbs. The second kit, Lifesavers, created in 2020 by Sister Imogen McCollum, dealt with natural disasters. In an attempt to reinforce the scriptural account that in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, the Children's Ministries Department Creation Week began in 2020. Throughout the week, we looked at each day of creation and the wonders which God in His wisdom, power, and love created. When the COVID-19 pandemic occasioned online services, the Children's Ministries Department sought to provide weekly Sabbath programs which catered to our children. This was provided for several months until local churches were able to provide on their own for their little ones. This allowed for many of our children to use their gifts and talents in service for God. The visit of Auntie Brenda to host a local Kids Time Praise program elicited excitement for our children. They were happy to participate in and attend that special Sabbath evening program. Miss Brenda also visited the Seventh-day Adventist primary and secondary schools, much to the delight and excitement of the children and teachers. In order to ensure that children's services are equipped to be effective, the department sought to build an inventory of equipment. Thus far, a lectern, a keyboard outfitted with an amplifier and keyboard stand and drapes have been purchased. These items were dedicated at children's programs, teaching them the significance of dedicating things to God. As I end this overview, I take this opportunity to thank you, our local Children's Ministries leaders, for your support. To our local GEMS and Women's Ministries leader, I say thank you. Thanks to our pastors and my colleagues for support. Thank you to my assistants, Cheryl Brongmings, Kate Jordan, and Leandra Greenwich for your hard work, long hours, and faithful support. Thanks to the administration for guidance and encouragement. A big thank you to my awesome family, Anthony, Adriel, and Isaiah. And most of all, thanks to God for the call to serve and inspiring and equipping the department's team to fulfill this call.